Hey guys, what's up? It's Mel Kozunki, and welcome to a little guide slash method on how to do frost dragons at a lower level. So what I decided to do for this video is since I have had over 85 dungeoneering for a long time, but I have not tried out frost dragons yet, I wanted to make that happen and see what it was like at a really low level account with low stats. Now, of course, to do frost dragons, 85 dungeoneering is quite a high requirement. Probably most people that have that are going to have chaotic melee weapons. I did not, so I was doing it with a Ceridum and Sword, which was kind of a mistake since the Ceridum and Sword did have a few accuracy problems. A Zamorakian Spear would definitely be better because it has the same stats as the Ceridum and Sword, but it is a stab weapon and the Ceridum and Sword is a slash weapon. And the Frost Dragons are in fact weak to stab, so a Zamorakian Spear would be better. However, the Ceridum Sword is much cheaper, and for the most part, I was able to kill the Frost Dragons before the Blue Balls appeared up. One thing that I can say is if you do not have Super Anti Fires and you want to try out Frost Dragons, do not bring an Anti Dragon Shield. There, I've seen other people there. I, there was one other guy there killing frost dragons when I was there, and he had a main hand rapier and an offhand dragon shield, and he was killing them quite a bit slower than me and was really struggling. So what I'd advise, if you don't have the super anti fires, just do what I do in this situation. I drink a regular anti fire and I pray magic, and the dragon fire only hits like 100s. It's really not that big of a deal. So that's what you want to be doing, and also just make sure to bring a lot of food with me, with you. Even though I do have soul split, I wasn't using it in this guy, just because you want to be praying magic when you're here. Not praying soul split, and the reason for that is because it makes the dragon fire hit a lot less. If you're not praying magic, typically the dragon fire is going to hit around 500 to 600 on you versus the 100s that it hits while you're praying magic. So that really helps a lot if you're an account that doesn't quite have the super anti fires yet. So the frost dragons, for the most part, are extremely easy to kill, even though they are a fairly high level, even with a low level weapon such as the Cerdo and Sword, which is only a level 75 weapon, doesn't have too many problems there. As you can see though, I did bring a Super Zamorak Brew, or you could bring Super Potions like Super Attack and Strength, and that's going to help you out a lot. And I would recommend to pray if you have like Piety Unlocked, which I don't unfortunately, and I'm always on the Curses spellbook. But if you do have Piety Unlocked, you can definitely pray that or even pray lower boosting prayers, just because it's going to help you out with accuracy. I was splashing a fair amount on the Frost Dragons. Again, for the most part, I was able to kill them before the blue orbs come out, and that's the most important thing. The Frost Dragons do have these blue reflect orbs, and if you see it circling around the Frost Dragon, if you hit it, it will reflect 100% of the damage that you deal back at you. So, for example, if you were just about to use your assault ability and the blue orb comes out and you hit like 5,000 total damage with your assault or 6,000 total damage, you can pretty much KO yourself with one ability. So that's something you really have to watch out for, um, especially if you are killing the frost dragons really fast and using a whole lot of uh, thresholds such as destroy and assault. You can really screw yourself over there. So what I decided to do also is just I did a 20 minute trip. Um, I did time the whole thing, so it took me about t exactly 20 minutes to do this trip. It was about 21 minutes or so, but uh, we'll just say the loot from this trip, you can multiply that by three, and that's how much you can make per hour here, and you can see me failing here at the end with the blue orbs there. That is really annoying. What you should do if you get a uh, frost dragon with a blue orb on it is just attack another frost dragon so you're not wasting your time, and that's the best thing to do. But I did do a full trip here. I could last a really long time. I was really surprised. And of course, you want to be using that magic note paper. Otherwise, you're going to have to bank constantly. So it's a really good idea to bring magic note paper with you so you can just stay for longer. Even though it costs like 1.2k each per magic note paper, the frost dragon bones, I believe, are about 15,000 each. So they're not going to cut down on your profit that much. And I was just cutting it really close here. I was very, very low on health and I didn't have any food left. I was just trying to pick up my last frost dragon bones and get out of there as soon as possible. And and this is all the loot that I got, which I'll price check in just a second here. Um, I believe it was 73 Frost Dragon Bones, or something like that. I can't quite see because the window that I'm editing in is really, really small, so I cannot see numbers or anything like that. I can just basically make out um, the larger objects. But I made about 1.2 mil in about 20 minutes of Frost Dragons. I was really surprised. For a lower level account, I had no idea I'd make anywhere close to that much. Um, but times that by three, of course, that's not including in travel time. So you got to include a couple minutes for time to bank and time to travel back. But all in all, we're, uh, this is around 2.8 to 3 mil an hour. So really good money. And I would highly recommend trying this out if you have 85 to engineering. And you're a lower level account with me, like me and you really struggle on making some cash. Anyway, that's going to do it for this little guide slash method, and farewell.